inside of an abandoned and deserted medieval village in Yorkshire, England, hides a very dark secret which tells us about the strange ideas and beliefs that people had during the time period. We consider the medieval period in some senses to have been rather backwards, in which the population had no regard for important things such as sanitation and cleanliness. The Black Death would sweep through England during this time, and would cause huge amounts of destruction and death, which caused the population figures to plummet on a scale never seen before. But Warren Percy, despite being an abandoned deserted medieval village, holds a beautiful church and a number of other buildings. The people here left as farming changed, and the villagers left, and in came flocks of sheep used for wool. But inside of the graveyard of the church, a disturbing practice was uncovered that showed the world what some medieval people believed about death. A number of corpses were found inside of the graveyard with posthumous execution marks, meaning that after death they were beheaded. But what is the story behind this? Join us today as we look at the brutal executions of dead bodies in medieval England. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Posthumous execution would be used in England a number of times, and the most high-profile case of this saw Oliver Cromwell, the Lord Protector of England and the Commonwealth, being executed after his death. His body and remains were dug up after King Charles II came onto the throne, and as Cromwell was seen as a regicide, a leading figure behind the execution of Charles I, the king who lost the Civil War, he was put to the sword. Cromwell's remains were decaying, and were then paraded through London, where they were displayed in shocking scenes at Tyburn, before his head was struck off, and then placed on a pike. But the cases of posthumous execution in Warren Percy occurred during the medieval period, centuries before. In 2017, a study was published in the Journal of Archaeological Science Reports, and in this article, it contained information from the team that analysed the bones that had been excavated from the abandoned village and also the churchyard. Warren Percy, the village, has had a very important role in telling us what we know about the medieval period, and the villagers would farm the land in the remote valley, and would also visit the beautiful church that still stands. They would also get food from the local mill pond, and seemingly had a happy life. They would visit the church weekly, and pay 10% of their earnings and wealth to the church, and they would believe all of the teachings of the church. The medieval church at this time would teach people all about heaven and hell, and they would strike fear into the hearts of the congregation and the villagers. But when things were tough in society, for example a bad harvest, or a very brutal bout of disease or pestilence that would run riot through the local area, the church quickly shifted blame onto those people who had sinned and who had been living an unholy life. This bad fortune was seen as God punishing people for their sins, and to disagree with what the church said during this time was very dangerous. To be declared a heretic was very serious, and could often result in the executions of an individual, with the most famous cases resulting in someone being burned at the stake. But the findings of the study told a medieval practice, which was very disturbing and shocking. There was a folk belief in the Middle Ages that dead bodies and the corpses of the dead could awake and rise from their graves, almost like zombies in horror films. The people then believed that these corpses and the dead would cause chaos, spread disease and illness, and also violently assault the villagers who came across them. These corpses were believed to have been restless, and the medieval church taught also of them, that they were caused by a lingering malevolent life force, that in living had committed evil and sinned heavily. Because of this it was believed in death, that their decaying bodies would come back to cause terror, and that they could not rest because of the evil they had committed in life. The church would say that the living dead were those people who had sinned, and that there were those who were waiting to be judged and were in purgatory. This idea would captivate the imagination of the people of Warren Percy, and because of this, they went to extreme steps, mutilating the dead, to make sure that they did not come back to wreak havoc in the remote village. The bones that were dug up from the village, and were dated to the medieval period, showed that they had distinct knife marks on them, as if they had been cut with a knife or a sharp-bladed weapon. This showed that after death, the bodies had been dismembered, and also there was evidence that the bodies were also decapitated after death. So the villagers performed a posthumous execution on the bodies, not to shame them, but to do what they believed would prevent the villagers from being haunted. 
It's not known if this beheading was done long after death, but a sharp weapon such as an axe would have been used to do this. Also, there was evidence that some of the body parts had been burned after death, and also that the bones were deliberately broken. So either the everyday villagers, or the ones involved in the church, would break the legs of the dead, and also would burn a few of the remains. This is incredibly shocking, as it shows us the lengths that they would go to in the medieval times, to ensure that they would be protected from the wrath of God. There were some questions raised with regards to the bones, also that cannibalism may have occurred with some of the remains. This would mean that during a famine, which was common in the medieval times, the corpses in the village were dug up, and then flesh from them was eaten. But the evidence around this theory does not entirely add up. If this was the case, the knife marks would have been around the major muscle attachment areas of large joints, but the knife marks on the Warren Percy remains were mostly focused around the head and the neck area. So inside of medieval society, there was a great degree of belief in the living dead, and people went to huge lengths to ensure that people were not haunted by the dead. It's probable that the church influenced the posthumous execution of dead bodies inside of villages, but the sight of someone's body being dug up, beheaded, and then hacked to pieces and stabbed would have been incredibly shocking to have seen. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.